culture, proliferation of content, all the content being created in the video game space, the movie space, the TV space, sports and music. Those are everyday things that used to be very niche and now it's very mainstream. Funko just is kind of a fast fashion approach to everything that is pop culture, signing as many diverse licenses as we can and connecting the fans of those things to the properties they love. You know, Brian, I've, I've followed your story for, for quite some time. Uh, how hard is it to, to pitch Wall Street on what you guys do? Because I've always felt there's a disconnect there when you see markets going haywire like they are now. You, you know, it is. It's absolutely an education process. We figure ourselves as more of a disruptive toy company. Um, you know, wide, wide net we cast when it comes to all the diversity of licenses. The fast fashion approach is very unique. Most uh, toy companies think in months and years. We think in days and weeks. Um, you know, none, none of our retail partners are any more than 7% of our business. None of our properties are any more than 8 9% of our business. So there's not a lot of concentration, which is a recipe for strength and success. So just kind of getting out there, educating Wall Street on what we do and how unique our business model is. Uh, also, the demographic we sell. We sell to men and women, boys and girls, which is very different than traditional toy companies. I, I don't want to ruin the gift that someone in my family is getting, but they're an Anglophile. <laughs> they love Queen Elizabeth. And I, I actually bought this. It was like 10 bucks. It's yeah. you know, just a little gag. Yeah. But uh, you make most of this, it comes from China, right? 50% um, of our products are actually produced outside of China, and by next year will be about 75% outside of China. The, the trade uh, TIF, whatever you want to call it, that yeah. we have right now with China, is it affecting your it, margins? It, it's not. We're, we're not affected by the tariffs right now, but we're looking at why would we produce outside of China, uh, cost of goods, speed to market, and quality of goods, and we found that we are having more success outside of China than we are within. You know, what's uh, your uh, big lineup next year for movies? Game of yeah. Thrones final season. What are some of the things yeah, so you are coming out with? I look at everything on a pop culture basis, geek as I am, um, based <laughs> on, you know, what the content looks like. And, and next year is an A-plus level year. I think this year was about a B, B-minus year. Uh, final season of Game of Thrones, uh, Stranger Things come back on, Rick and Morty comes back on, Star Wars Episode Nine, Frozen 2, and Avengers Affinity War sequel. So those are seven or eight just top, level A type of properties, and we obviously have all the licenses for those. You have Pennywise, the yes. clown, which is yes. actually kind of creepy. Yes. I mean, you know, it has an arm and blood and all yes. that. There was a craze in the 80s, the Beanie Baby craze. Correct. Do you ever worry that, that something like that might happen with your product? No, I mean, we're for Pop specifically, uh, year eight, and we're up 36% for the property line. We think we create platforms, and the content takes care of keeping the platforms fresh and unique each and every year because there's a sequel going on for, for um, it, it too. Um, you know, there's a new season of Game of Thrones. There's a new, you know, sports teams uh, come and go with tr uh, trading players. Music evolves. Uh, video games evolve. I mean, who would have thought of Fortnite two, three years ago? And now Fortnite's everything right now. And, yep. of course, we have the Fortnite license. So um, pop culture takes care of that for us. We just create whimsical, fun platforms that tie those fan bases to the things they love. Brian, your stock, we just had it up on the screen, is up over it's something like 79% over the past year. Mm -hmm. In terms of future growth for Funko, yeah. where do you see that going? And how do you, I guess, continue to gain market share? Yeah, I, I think, you know, what's something interesting for us is we're up 30% uh, domestically without add, adding any doors. Um, international growth is through the roof. And I think the other thing is we're going to look at adjacent um, categories that seem like something that would be, you know, in our core competency. Board games would be one, for example, where we can get in. We acquired a uh, purse handbag wallet company, so we did bags and accessories for licensed goods. That has helped our growth as well. Um, it's still going to be fueled by proliferation of content and consumption of that content. Now, Brian, do you think you should still be public? And I ask that because you're sitting on a treasure trove of, of content and mm -hmm. media. Can't Funko, shouldn't it be under a large umbrella where you can turn these characters into movies every, every year? Yeah, I, I think you can, but I think what, what, what's made us so unique is is that we do everything we do everything that matters to people and i think that that's you know being reliant on just too few properties or just concentrating on just too few things is really um the antithesis of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis people love everything whether something as niche as a, a show on the cw like supernatural or going back and going doing golden girls or seinfeld from things that people grew up on i think that's an, that's what's important for us to do connecting the fans and and if you just focus on just the three or four or five big properties every year you're missing so much of the world's population and what they love